Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today, we are on episode number 185. I am Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also, make sure to follow Code Karate on Twitter at Code Karate. And check us out on Facebook, Google+, and any of those other social networks. As I mentioned, we're on episode 185, and today we're going to be going over the Sweaver module. And this is a module I recently stumbled across that basically allows it or allows you to easily change the look or the appearance of your website. So rather than writing CSS code or using a, the CSS injector module or something like that, you can use this module to quickly change styles and theme or, and your theme on your Drupal website. I, it comes with a caveat, I guess you can say, is in that it, it isn't the most reliable module. It's a little funky to configure and to use, but it does work pretty well. And if you don't know CSS or don't want to learn or don't want to actually create a new theme, something like that, this module allows you to quickly and easily make changes over top of your existing theme. So it's a nice module for someone who's maybe just getting started and doesn't want to actually do a lot of the development on their own. So we're using the 7.x-1.3 version of the Sweaver module and we'll go ahead and turn it on. So as you can see we have a pretty basic standard Drupal 7 install right out of the box and we're not going to be able to get to all of the features of the module there's quite a bit but we'll at least get it looked at and you'll get an idea of what it can do and if it's right for you. So once the module is turned on here we'll go ahead and look at the various permissions it offers there are two permissions one is to configure all the settings and one is to actually use the front end editor as you can see the administrator has the options for those which is fine the menu or the configuration pages are located in configuration user interface sweaver so we'll go ahead and go there now there's quite a bit of configuration you can do on this module. It's very, very configurable. You can change it, move things around, and really optimize it for how you want it to work. This checkbox is the important one to make sure the editor is enabled. If this isn't checked, you can't really use the module, so I believe you're going to need to keep that checked pretty much most of the time. You can specify specific paths you don't want the actual editor to show up on. You can specify certain selectors to exclude certain classes and certain properties that are allowed. We're going to leave this page all at its default. We'll go ahead and go to the editor tab up here. Here you can configure where things show up in the editor. You're going to see that in just a second but you can go ahead and move things around to different tabs or sub tabs within the editor itself we're looking at the selectors tab now and you can see here's all the different selectors you can actually select and change the styles of if you are not familiar with CSS some of these tags and uh, selectors that we're going to go through might seem a little uh, a little different but if you are familiar with HTML and CSS you'll obviously recognize these right away so in that basically that last tab allowed you to edit the selectors that you can use here you can change or add properties so if you want to add another CSS property that's not supported out of the box you can add one and it should work if you do add a property you'll need to make sure you come into the types and select where that property needs to show up so if I edit the block type you'll notice it selects where which properties should be showing up when you select that type of item. There's a whole bunch of different plugins. We're going to start with the defaults to just manage styles and the images plugin, but we'll come in and we'll add a few of these after we show how it how the basic use case works. You can have it show the delete tab if you want to be able to delete your different styles. You can have it auto save as well. And then images just allows you to upload different images for your theme. Okay, so enough with the configuration. A lot of that probably didn't make sense, but once you see 
how it works on the front end, you'll kind of be able to understand what those options do. So when I come back to my home page on my Drupal 7 site, you'll notice I have this little toolbar or style section down here. What this allows me to do is style various parts of the site. You'll notice as I hover, you can see in red dotted borders what I'm selecting. So my first thing I'm going to do is let's say I want to change this blue color. I know you can do this in the theme settings but not all themes have color module integration so I'm going to go ahead and select this. You can see the red around the border there and you can see I have different options. I can change the font so I can do different things with the font. Notice how some of this text gets bold when I click the bold. You can change the background which is what we're going to do here in a little bit. There's borders and spacing so if you want to space it out a little more you can do that. You can add padding, you can add a border, you can add margins and then you can change the height and the width. So what we're going to do is change the background. We'll change it to some version of some red up here. That one looks pretty good and you can of course enter in the color directly. You'll notice nothing seems to have changed. Well because this theme uses an image as well we need to change the background image to no image. And just like that you'll notice we now have a little bit of a red color there in our background and you can play around with that and get it to the color you want. The next thing we're going to do is let's change this area down here, this white, to a different background color. Let's just change it to some gray, just a light gray maybe. And we're going to copy this because we're also going to need to change this area here to that same gray. You Notice you can just paste it in and now that matches up. And now as you can see the theme is changed. None of this is saved yet though. So if I close out of this or I went to it as an anonymous user, I'm not going to see these changes. In order to see the changes or to publish these changes, I have to click the save button here. And you have to give your style a name. So I'm just going to call this red style for now. You could call it whatever you wanted just so you remember what style it is. And you can click save and continue editing or you can click save and publish. I'm going to click save and publish and you'll know now that or you'll see now that it says the style has been published you'll also see there's additional tabs down here you can save over top of it or create a new style you can load an existing style or you can publish the changes that you've made so there's the basic use case as you could see there's a whole bunch of options in here from fonts to your backgrounds your borders pretty much anything all of the basic CSS properties are configurable right out of the box. But let's go ahead and look at some of these other plugins that you can use with the Sweeper module. So I'll just quick go over this editor tab one more time. You'll notice that these different properties are those sub tabs that were on the left side when you're on that style tab in the Sweeper module. So this is how you can reposition these into different areas or if you add additional properties you can position them where you want them to actually show up. But let's go ahead and go to this plugins tab and turn on the advanced plugin. We'll also turn on the switch theme and the theme settings plugin. If you have the font in your face module you can turn on font face plugin and that will allow you to change uh, the fonts and then give you more flexibility with what types of fonts you want to use. And there's a few other plugins that you can also play around with that we're not going to be able to go over but you can definitely look at them and see if they help you build out your theme. Okay so once we save that we're going to go back and you'll notice there's a few more tabs that are going to show up here. We now have an advanced, a switch theme, and a theme settings tab. So we're going to go to the advanced and you'll notice there's a watchdog section which is just a list of all the changes that you've made in your style tab. There's also an option for custom CSS. So if you have something that you just can't quite get working or you need to override a small piece you can just add some custom CSS right here. The switch theme allows you to do exactly what it sounds like. You can 
click and switch the theme. So it says you now switch to 7. One thing you will run into when working with this module is you'll notice that this uh, toolbar or designer bar down here sometimes stops working. You'll notice that there's a few little tweaks or quirks with it. If that seems to happen, typically a quick refresh of the page seems to, for the most part, get rid of most of your issues and then it gets back to working again but just keep that in mind that it's not exactly the, a perfect module it works pretty well but there are some quirks when you're really using it that you might run into so as you can see and if you switch the theme it seems to make it show up double But you click around a little bit, you refresh the page, and then it seems to start working again. So we're going to look at, we looked at the switch theme, we're going to look at the theme settings. This allows you to change your theme settings directly from in this toolbar here. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this logo. So we're going to change the logo image settings. You'll notice in an overlay it pops up this logo settings form, which is the same form that's on your theme page or your appearances page. So I'm going to go ahead and select the logo, click apply, and this logo now appears. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to give this a new style, even though it is pretty much the same thing. Call this one Code Karate, and I will save and publish this. Now if I go to load, you'll see I'll be able to select between my two different styles. Another thing I'm going to show you how what you can use here is the images tab. The images tab allows you to upload various images. You notice you got the double issue again. All right, so we want to be able to upload Im various images maybe for a background. So if you want to actually have a background as your image or an image as a background up here you can go ahead and start by uploading an image so we'll start by just uploading this snowflakes image since it is winter right now we'll call this one snowflakes and we'll also go ahead and upload one called snowfall so you can see that you can alt upload multiple images here and we will upload that one as well and now let's go ahead and style this if we can get the toolbar to show up and let's say we want to change this background image you'll notice when I click on this image drop down there's two new options here snowfall and snowflakes because we up just uploaded these images. So if I go to Snowflakes, you'll notice my background image is now turns to that Snowflakes image. If I go to Snowfall, it's going to show this little animated GIF, which isn't the best quality, but you get the picture. You can go ahead and put any image you want in there, and it's going to show up as your background. So now we have you know a Snowflake theme. We could change the colors. We could you know match around this and I could also then save this so let's say I wanted to and change these colors back to white I wanted to save it and call this one snowflakes or we'll just call it we'll actually call it winter so say we wanted a winter style theme uh, now it's all right. Well, look, it's saved there. So now, if we want to change back to the Code Karate one, we can just go to Load Style, and we're back to the Code Karate. We want to go back to the Winter one. We just hit Load Style, and it's back to the Winter theme. So as you can see, this allows you to create styles on top of your theme. It doesn't actually change any of your theme settings. So if I were to uninstall this module or disable this module, 
it's going to go back to the theme that it, the original base Drupal theme so I can show you that quick and then we can pretty much wrap this thing up there's a lot of options here as you can see it's a little buggy but it does allow you to do some things pretty quickly as far as making theme changes across the board so if I just check, uncheck the box for the editor you'll notice that I can still see my theme which is good because then you can turn this editor off after you get it to a point where you're happy with your style but as soon as I disable the module everything's going to go back to the way it was before you can after you publish it you can look at this as an anonymous user you may have to clear the cache just because of uh, anonymous uh, your pages may be cached so go ahead and if you're going to test that you might need to clear your cache but I'm going to go ahead and turn this module off and we'll see that everything goes back to the way it was before I started working with the Sweeper module we're back to normal the only difference is the actual logo because I uploaded that from the technically the theme settings page is still going to show with my with the logo that was uploaded so that's the Sweeper module a lot to it it's fairly complicated a little buggy but it works pretty good and allows you to quickly and easily change styles on top of your theme and give you a whole bunch of flexibility with how you want your website to look without having to write any CSS code make sure to check out codecrowdy.com check out the ebook uh, post comments if you like it if you don't like it and we'll see you next time thanks for watching the daily dose of Drupal bye